Hello there, YouTube. It's Victor. Give me a break, man. Um, and uh, I came home tonight. So let me explain my little chicken in my mouth. Um, my normal pattern. I come. I work. I usually leave the house most days at 8.30, depending on the day. 8.30 a.m., sometimes 7.30, sometimes a little bit later. I don't have to work every day, but um, uh, I usually get home about 7 p.m., 6 p.m., depending on the day again. Sometimes early enough to pick up my kids from um, nursery school or daycare, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but once in a while, like once a week or so, I come home after 9 and my wife and kids are all already asleep. So my, um, you know, I, I creep into the house <laughs> and um, and uh, go to the, the bed where they all are. I open up the curtains, um, or just enough moonlight in so I can see my kids and my wife and I go and kiss them, look at them, kiss them rub their heads, smell them a little bit, um, depending on how they're acting. I did that tonight again. Uh, but as you can tell from the title of this video, today is not a very happy day in Japan, but I, but I thought it's something that, you know, a lot of people, like YouTube even doesn't even encourage us to have these discussions, but like this probably can't be monetized. Uh, which which is is, is a discouraging um, notion because you know why make a video for free when you can make it for money I suppose but but I, I don't care I, I care about this so I want to talk about it whether or not this video gets views or money or whatever I don't care <clears throat> anyway excuse me for mumbling but uh, today in Japan in Kawasaki. A 50-ish year old man um, st what's what's the word staked out a a bus stop where young girls from ages 6 to 12 from what I can understand I'm, I'm sure other people too um, got you know waited for the bus and uh, he attacked the line and ended up stabbing 17 people and killing two, including himself, so three. Um, and you know, when I, when you see stories like this, uh, well, well, first of all, it's, it's completely fucked up. But something that you'll hear a lot in Japan from Japanese is uh, apparently, these kind of crimes occur because people are miserable, and people seem to know that. And I've heard many Japanese people say, like, you know, he should have just killed himself if he was that miserable. But there's some, there seems to be some kind of weird, um, <laughs> if I'm going to go, I'm going to take everyone out with me kind of mentality here with the psychos. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm sure that exists in other countries as well, but my feeling in America is not so much that they're miserable as that they want to become famous. You know. Like in Japan, you rarely hear what, the, who, what these people's names are, so they never become famous. But in, in, um, in America, they're, they're, they're kind of famous for, at least for a little while. They're famous, right? So that's kind of fucked up. Uh, just noticed the camera here at an angle. Uh, anyway, it's 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 screwy. It's a screwed up uh, situation, right? But what can you do? Is that good? Oh, that's all the same. Doesn't really change much. So then, but but I mean, um, incidents like this open the door for many kinds kinds of conversation, like guns, for example, of course. Like when something like this happens, because because let me explain. Let me explain for those of you who don't know what happened. A man in Kawasaki was in his fifties. He was in his fifties. He uh, he went to a, a bus uh, line in um, in Kawasaki at a place called. I'll give you the exact location so you guys can. I'll I'll link it in the description so you guys can look it up if you want. Um, oh come on, man. Uh, it's a place called Nobori Tori Station. 
And there's a place called Caritas Elementary School. It's a private Catholic school. I don't imagine that the Catholic, uh, the fact that it's a Catholic school had any relevance because um, something weird about Japan is a lot of people wear uniforms that are based on Christian um, schools back in the day when, when uh, I guess after World War II, when Christian schools became popular. A lot of the Japanese would just base their uniforms on those patterns, on those styles, but they, even if they weren't religious. Uh, at my own school, I teach, um, I don't know, about 10 high school girls. All of them wear uniforms to school, but none of them are religious. Um, yeah. Ironically, one of my staff is religious. <laughs> I mean, she went to a religious school, but she's not religious, so she's not Catholic, but she went to a Catholic school. Anyway. Um, okay, so the point being, uh, this was actually a Catholic school. Uh, were, were they Catholic? Probably not. Not necessarily, anyway. And this guy staked out this line, this retsu, this, uh, everyone was lined up. And, and on any given day, uh, according to local uh, eyewitnesses, uh, there were 50 to 100 kids hanging out or hanging out lined up waiting for the bus So this guy comes out of nowhere with two knives one in each hand and starts yelling Which means I'll kill you and he starts slashing at people he ended up killing uh, I believe an 11 year old girl Hanako Kuribayashi six uh, grader from Tama Tokyo and and a guy named Satoshi Oyama, a 39-year-old foreign ministry official, but the initial reports were that she, um, the killer killed her, killed the father as well, but the names don't match up, so I'm thinking maybe later news stories are discovering that that was not true, but I don't know. Um, you know, you want to, partially you want to say like, well, good dad, you were protecting your daughter kind of stuff, but then the wife, you know, is left with nothing. Uh, which is better? <laughs> is it better for uh, the husband to have died protecting his daughter and leaving the wife alone or for the uh, daughter just to have died and leaving the husband and daughter alone? Who knows? There's also the possibility that they're divorced, so... Uh, um, yeah... Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. It's not a, it's not a happy. Uh... Oh, and, and yeah, they got the killer's name. The killer is a fifty-one-year-old, same as me, same as yours truly, named Ryuichi Iwasaki. So here's the thing, you know, he's obviously mentally disturbed. There's something wrong with this guy. And I've got a kid who's two years old. I got, I've got a daughter who's two, and a son who's four. So you know, when you see these stories, it hits close to home. But I'm, I'm not, I'm not one of those Japan. I'm, 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 excuse me, one of those humans. There's a lot of humans who, when some tragedy happens in their town or in their in their neck of the woods, they're like, "Oh my God, that could have been me," and they're all dramatic about it. I don't think that at all. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I don't think we're going to be extra precautious tomorrow when we go out. But but I will tell you something that was fucked up. So I read this story on my phone as I was uh, going to work this morning. And I get off the subway, because it was raining really hard. I usually ride my bicycle, but today it was raining really hard, so I took the subway. I get off the subway, I'm walking over. There's a guy, like a few meters away from me, carrying a hammer. Like a, this is like a Thor's hammer. Not a Thor's hammer, a little bit longer, but a hammer. This is in case anyone tries to troll me while I'm blogging. I'm like, you troll me, ma. Anyway. Um, I noticed him, and I just read the story about this nutcase who'd killed, who'd killed two people and stabbed all these others. Stabbed seventeen people, by the way. And I was like, okay, I, of course I'm I'm being paranoid, but he was like looking at me, probably because only because I'm a foreigner and there's not many foreigners around. At least in Nagoya, I mean they're much more common than they used to be. Anyway, I um, he was off to my right behind me and I thought oh he's kind of following me <laughs> so I started to, you know it happened and it was, it was it was going on for like a block and a half and I thought okay I'm getting a little paranoid so I like t 
turn left on the sidewalk. It was a very wide sidewalk, like four meter wide, a four meter wide sidewalk. And started going the other direction. I didn't even pretend like I was like, oh, I forgot my something. You know, I, I didn't even pretend. I just turned around and I did a U-turn on the sidewalk and turned around. And he kept going straight. And I watched him and I, I turned, you know, I, I watched him and followed along the sidewalk and watched him. And he turned into a construction site. And of course, he was dressed like it too, but he's just a construction worker. Um, but anyway, so you, you see stories like this where some nutcase stabs 17 people, kills two people, and then people who are gun rights activists use this as a case to say, hey, see, what are you going to do now? Outlaw knives, you know? But the truth is, if he had had a gun, he would have probably killed more than two people, you know? He stabbed 17 people. He slashed 17 people. Um, I gotta tell you, that's pretty bad aim. I think he wasn't very skilled, uh, which is good, thankfully. Um, but if he had had a gun, it probably would have been much worse, right? Now, that is not to say that I'm not behind the theoretical um, gun rights. I think I don't think there's anything wrong with being able to, to own a gun and have a gun. But the truth of the matter is that as much as a as a as I am libertarian when it comes to gun rights, at the end of the day, I understand that America is not fit to own a gun. Um, let's say you 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 have a son, okay? And you say, he wants a dog. And you go, okay, well, you're old enough to have a dog. So, and like, uh, the other kids that age have a dog. So, you give him a dog. But the dog often ends up, you know, he, he doesn't get potty trained properly. And he ends up getting, you know, hit hit by a car because he runs out in the road because your son isn't taking care, of him, taking care of him. Anyway, although the, all the neighbor's kids seem to be able to control their dog, yours, your son cannot. There comes a point where you have to say, well, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to take the dog away from you because it's becoming too much of a problem. Uh, and that dog is suffering. And that's basically what I think about uh, when I consider gun rights in America. I mean, Canada and Canadians, apparently, have as many guns as we do, but they don't fucking kill themselves like we do. Uh, they don't kill each other like we do. So although I'm theoretically behind, you know, the independent right to carry a gun... It's all pretty obvious that we. It's pretty obvious that we're not good at it, and that we're, we can't be trusted. So um, there comes a time when I think you've got to do something, and and I'm I'm before all you you know gun right activists go crazy. I don't know what the answer is to that, but I know that it isn't no, doing nothing. Doing nothing is not an answer because that's that has not been working. Uh, so I think we've got to do something. Um, now, this, uh, I'm sure this, this stabbing in Japan is going to be used by gun rights activists to, sh to say, hey, see, there's no point in banning guns because, you know, people will just use knives. But although two people died, uh, it could have been much worse. So I, in, in a way, I got to say I'm thankful that only two people died. Um... Yeah, and I, I don't want to be, you know, I'm, please uh, do not infer from this video that I'm, you know, uh, I'm in to bring my children into this. I just wanted to give you uh, a sense of where I'm coming from as a father. I come home, I see my kids, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful to have my kids. And, my, and, I, and of course, my wife. <laughs> I'm glad she hasn't run off yet. She's in bed, my kids are in bed. Uh, usually they're... They come, they're, you know, they're having dinner or watching TV or taking a bath when I come home. Um, uh, but yeah, but a, a couple things to point out for those of you who are interested in Japanese culture and stuff. When this, this stuff happens every few months or so, you know, and Japan has a lot of like mental illness that's untreated. And this is how it, it, it um, what's the word, manifests itself, you know, in this, these kind of fucked up killings. And it's happened before, and it'll happen again. And the the we yeah, the weird thing about this is that Japanese will when this happens, Japanese will say, "Wow, he should have just killed himself." 
Um, which is an interesting thought, you know? I mean, because if someone were just to kill themselves for no reason, you probably wouldn't, your first uh, inclination wouldn't be, well, that's good. <laughs> but if if you were to be able to see the future and, and were able to predict that, oh, that person's going to kill a lot of people because they're, they're about to snap, so they should kill themselves, then it would be a different way of thinking. You know, you'd have a different uh, outlook on the whole thing. So it's, in, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, anyway, this guy, I, I have to agree with the Japanese. He should have killed himself. Instead, he killed a little girl and a, and, uh, and a 39-year-old guy. <sighs> anyway. Um, so, you got So, yeah. So, Japan is extremely safe, but no matter where you are, if there are other humans involved, it's never going to be that safe. So, here's to the... The children who made it. And here's to your children. May they be safe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys very soon. Another video uploading very soon. More a happier video. Um, with Tomoko this. I guess I'll put that up after this. Watch that one, too. It's a good one. And, you know. You know what to do. Don't make me use a hammer on you. Bye-bye.